Ask of me and I'll give the nations as your inheritance. Remember the field of dreams, build it and they'll come. Little did I know that the president of our nation would come to service at 9 o'clock. And I didn't even believe it till Friday when I drove into the parking lot and I saw about 30 secret service agents working on the grounds. And, you know, I, I, I didn't like the man when we, with this whole process started four and a half years ago. I didn't like his personality. I'm more of a counselor and more a peacemaker. And uh, so I supported Dr. Carson and became part of the campaign. And I was a new American, and they wanted me to help. So I thought, I, I want to make a difference. I saw what was happening in Europe. I said, I don't want that to happen in America. And so long story short, I, I, um, Pasquale said, uh, listen, he wants to come to church. I wouldn't let him come to church. I really wouldn't. I, I, I said, but... Um, I'll let him come to the school one day, and, and uh, we had 200-plus kids in the lobby singing God Bless America, and, and uh, then they asked us to put together a meeting with minorities in our, in our city, and I'm a minority because I was French-Canadian. Uh, I'm probably the biggest minority in the city, uh, or the smallest, I should say, not many of us here, um, but I, I said, sure, and so we put together that meeting, and Pasquale pulled everybody together, and other team members did, and we had a meeting back there in the VIP room, and I saw a different component of, of this gentleman who, in the newspapers, maligned him quite a bit, but I found out he actually had a good heart, and um, it was a really powerful time. And so then one time I was preaching in Dallas, and got a phone call from Denise on a Saturday night, and I was going to preach the next day. She goes, um, uh, Donald Trump wants to come. There was about two weeks left before the election, maybe a week, and I said, no, he can't come. I didn't want him to come to church. Uh, I thought it would be too disruptive. And because uh, he was like a lightning rod for a lot of, con- a lot of uh, controversy. I said, oh, I don't, don't let him come to church. And um, long story short, she said, well, he'll come incognito. He'll just come, <laughs> you know, but he's six foot four with blonde hair. You know, that just, you kind of notice when he comes in. And I had a change of heart immediately. I said, if he's willing to come in covert, we'll let him come in. But I'm not coming home. He needs to hear an anointed woman of God preach. Give my wife a big hand, please. So it was about a month ago, and I was in prayer, and the Lord says, uh, President Trump will come back. He needs your prayers. And uh, I thought, wow, it's crazy. And are you kidding me? And, and I told Pasquale, I said, I, I think he's going to come to church. I, I think God spoke to my brain. Because sometimes we don't always know if it's our imagination or if it's whatever, you know, pizza or whatever it's going to be. But then, um, I, and then I told him again. I said, and Pasquale says, yeah, yeah, I think he's coming. And so because he's, of course, connected to all that, and I'm not. And, and so he came to church this morning. He just wanted to worship God. And um, ask of me. It's on our, our wall out there. Ask of me, and I'll give the nations as your inheritance. So are, are you asking God for great things? Yeah. It's okay to give God praise, right? What are you asking of God for your life, your church, your business? What are you, well, your children, your grandchildren? What are you asking God to do? Because what we just experienced at 9 o'clock was another God moment that there's no way. I'm at you know, 20, I wanted to commit suicide. I was a fighter. Uh, and here I am, part of this. And Pasquale was from the mean streets of Vegas, and look where he's at right now. And, and my princess was a little French-Canadian princess. Uh, and uh, look at her now, preaching and prophesying and changing the world. And if God could use anyone, he could use me. See, the great thing of what's happening today, and you here in this room, is if God can use me, I promise he, you can... You're smarter than I am. You're probably more anointed than I am. You're probably better looking than I am. You probably have more skills than I am. But I, I think God amuses himself with using me. It's like he goes, well, if I can use Paul, I can use anybody. And I've sung that song a million times. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, and speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Come on now. Come on now. I want to tell you how much I love you guys. You know, it's an honor to be your friend. 
I, I just want all of you to get on my shoulders because I'm having the best time of my life. I, I want you to get on our shoulders, our staff, because it's not about us. It's really about him, and it's about what God's doing through your life. I'm an old drunk, an old hockey player, an old fighter. These are not my teeth, and these are, this is my, well, this is my face. <laughs> and these ridges are cuts and scars, and, and um, but I know that God's using me, and He's using Pasquale and Norma, and he's using my bride. And, but you know what? The beautiful thing is he's, he wants to use you as much or probably more. He probably has more to work with you. you. I'm t- I know you think I'm just saying that, but it's not, I think he has more to work with with you. Imagine a young man that wanted to kill himself at 20. I had a plan. I even knew how I was going to do it. And all of a sudden, someone shared Christ with me. Not a religion, but a relationship. So today, the message is, it's not going to be a long message, because I, I literally feel like, like someone punched a, put a hole in my balloon, and I, and I, it's just all the warfare coming up to today, the, I have had many sleepless nights coming up to this day, because I knew that God spoke to me a month ago, he said, your president is going to come back, and you need to shift America, I've been, I've walked through a riot in, in Washington, D.C., I had people tell me they're going to F me up, simply because I, I was at an event. I mean, it was, it was just the most horrendous thing. It was like so demonic in its essence. The hatred, the venom coming out. So I was just smiling at them and thank you so much. I, I was trying to be polite to them, but they just were yelling at me, saying horrible things. I'm just telling you right now, there is a battle over our nation right now. It's not about personalities. It's about policies. It's not about people. It's about people yielded to God. And if God can use a donkey, he can certainly use me. It, it's true because he used the donkey in the Bible. So in Nehemiah chapter 2, we're going to look at it right now. Are you all still with me? Is it okay that I get really personal for a moment? Because I feel like I, I, I gave everything I had in that first service because just to get here was a battle. I, I spent sleepless nights getting ready for what God was about to do. I didn't know it was going to happen until Friday. Even though I had the word and then Pasquale had the word, I still thought, ah. And so Friday I came here and there's like 30 secret service people out there. And it was so wild that I got here early today. But I, at, at 8.23 I arrived there and they blocked me on my street. I couldn't get into my own church. And the guy, the person wasn't very nice to me. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm actually the, the leader of that church. <laughs> Why we don't care? <laughs> so I had quite a morning this morning. A little, but I know that, that I'm here in this service to tell you that God's about to do something amazing in your life. Because we're, 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 we're talking about resetting and rebuilding through the end of COVID. I'm declaring it right now. COVID is ending. So I want you to grab your Bibles right now real quick. I'm not going to keep you long because I, I, I just gave everything I have and I'm just surrendered right now. But I want you to look at Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 3. The survivors who were left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. You may feel the same way. Maybe you don't have a job. Maybe you don't know how you're going to pay the bills. Maybe you've been discouraged and beaten up. Maybe you're afraid of getting sick. I don't know what your story is. But it says they're in reproach and distress. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days and was fasting and praying to the God of heaven. It's time to reset and rebuild. Everybody say reset and rebuild. We should be moved by this mess, and we should appeal to heaven. Today after service, we have food that we reserve just for you. We're now helping 30 churches and organizations on Friday, but we always reserve some for you. Whether you need it or someone you know needs it, there's fresh food direct from the producers in that truck there. Just get it. It's for you, for your life, your family, or for someone else that you know. But there was a mess, and there's a mess right now in our nation. Nehemiah chapter 4 says that he was moved by the mess. He wept. He prayed. We talked about that two weeks ago. Thirdly, Nehemiah took action. The Bible says he repented. He prayed. He fasted. In, uh, there was a, a proclamation Lincoln made called Proclamation 97. 
During the Civil War, you've got to read this. Just Google Proclamation 97. And he says it's a day of humiliation, repentance. You read it. It's like the Bible in, in, in uh, American language. It was insane what the Lincoln did. And, and you know what happened next. I'm just telling you right now that God's about to do something new in your life, but it starts with true recognition of the mess. It starts with being moved by it, not just... I don't care about that person. I don't care about the city. I don't care about the state. We have to care. Thirdly, Nehemiah took action, fasted, and prayed. But number four, he appealed to the king. Now, when you look at Nehemiah chapter 2, the Bible says he was in the presence of the king, and he was in comfort. He lived in the castle. That's not a bad setup. In the Babylonian nation, he's a Jew living with Babylonians, But God raised them up. Someone say, God's going to raise me up. See, that's what God does. He raises up a guy that wanted to kill himself and puts me in this position. See, that's God. It's not me. It's me being yielded to God. So if I'm yielded to God, will you be yielded to God? You read this scripture here in verse 2. The king says, why why is your face so sad since you're not sick? This is nothing but a sore of the heart. So I became really afraid. So, so Nehemiah goes, man, I'm so stinking afraid because he noticed I was in a bad mood. So this says a lot about his personality. He didn't go to work every day just complaining. Ah, oh, you know, he's not a disgruntled employee, even though he was a slave. I know a lot of Christians, they want to get blessed, but they're disgruntled. They're disgruntled about their church. They're disgruntled about their work. They, they, they're complaining. They, they don't like their bodies. They don't like their, they don't like their jobs. They're bitter. They're bitter. Disgruntled. Someone say disgruntled. But that's not positioning yourself for the greatest miracle of your life. God wants to do stuff in you that will blow your mind. My mind was blown this morning that I had the privilege of sharing the gospel one more time with the president and secret service. One more time, Pasquale and Norma prophesied and prayed. And one more time, my daughter Christine led in worship. And one more time, Tony and the team did a killer job insane. Give them a huge round of applause, please. But it doesn't take away the fear sometimes, <laughs> right? It doesn't take away, oh my goodness, the president's coming and all his gang's coming and, 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 and it's three times. Someone told me the other day he never goes anywhere twice. Well, this is his third time here. And you may not like the president, and it's not, remember, it's not about personalities. It's about policy. See, the media wants to make it about a personality when God wants to make it about policies. He wants to make it about the truth. He wants to, if he can use a donkey, he can certainly use me. See, that's the thing that we get into personalities, and that's really not God. It got, God wants us to see through that. They did the same thing to Paul, who was Saul. Saul killed Christians stole their properties, but God says, I'm going to raise up Paul to do great things. And all the Christians were terrified. Oh, no, here comes Saul. And God changes his name to Paul, which means little. It's not a coincidence that my name is Paul because it means little. I'm just a little guy. It's true, my name is little. But then my middle name is Mark, which means warrior. Shabba! So I'm a little warrior for God. Can someone say amen to that? So, so here's a couple things, and I don't, I'm not going to take long. I told you I wouldn't. The Bible says he appealed to the king. You and I can appeal to our king. It's not our president. There is no royalty in this nation. He's an elected official, just as God has elected you. In fact, the Bible calls you God's elect. Omar, did you know that? You are God's elect. Did you know that? That God literally says, I'm putting my finger on you. Tony, you're God's elect. This worship team is blowing my mind. Emily, you're blowing my mind. Gang, you're blowing my mind. It's as good as anything I've heard anywhere in the world, and I've been all around the world. I'm going, oh my goodness, not only is it good, it's anointed. It just, you can feel God in this place. Somebody say amen. And they're all volunteers. Every one of them is volunteering, giving their time, and just loving on God and loving on people. Let's get away from the show. I'm not interested in shows. I'm interested in show me you. Like God's saying, show me you. 
I don't want a show. I want you. Anybody still with me? Okay, four quick things. We're going to go through it really fast. Number two, he appealed to the king. This is a great scripture. May the king live forever. In other words, he didn't say, ah, you're a Babylonian king. I hate you. I don't like you. I don't like your personality. He was a Babylonian king. We're called to love. I love my governor. We have different views, but I love my governor. I bless my governor. I mean, I really do. Attorney general, not my views. I love my attorney general. I got his phone number. I got the right-hand man of the governor. I sent him encouraging texts. You say, wow, aren't you partisan? I'm not partisan at all. I'm a Christian. I'm an equal opportunity lover. I love them all. Now, I have political views, and I have poli- more policy views, I'd say is a more pro- appropriate word, because I have to have my views and still respect and love them. So when I called the governor's office the other day, talked to his right-hand man, I said, we're going to help with the feeding program. We're going to help feed the poor in our state. He couldn't get over it. He could not get over it because whether I'm Republican or Democrat or Libertarian, I'm here to love. I'm here to bring heaven down to earth. Amen? So when you look at this, he goes, oh, great king, (laughs) if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask you that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tomb, that I may rebuild it. He didn't hide his motive. He wants to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. The beautiful thing is this man wanted to go back to his hometown. He was a slave, asking his slave owner to let him go to rebuild his city. And the Babylonian king says, go for it. Wouldn't it be great if all of a sudden your boss says, I'm going to give you a double raise, I'm going to give you a promotion, and I'm going to give you a new car, I'm going to give you a new home. Wouldn't it be great if you're, or wouldn't it be great if you become the owner of a company that becomes the next Facebook or the next Twitter or whatever? Wouldn't it be great if someone in this room started doing things and believed that literally the king of heaven is on our side? I don't know if you know this. I'm glad that he came, but I'm more glad that he came. I'm, more, I'm happier that the heaven... The king of heaven is in this place right now by his spirit. Some would say, by his spirit. Is it okay if I give you some word here? Is that all right? I just want to make sure I'm in the right church here. <laughs> Listen to this. It's so cool. Uh, uh, send me to, I want to rebuild the wall. Now that's like saying, let me go be, rebuild the wall of the enemy, David. It's literally saying something so contradictory to rationale. Because the Jews were enemies of the Babylonians. The Babylonians defeated them. They're all in captivity. He says, let me go home so I can rebuild it. The king should have said, no, are you crazy? I'm going to bless my enemy? Instead he says, hey, sounds good to me. And then verse 7, it says this. It says, if it pleases the king. Now remember, he's, he's got a great attitude. Friends, we have to have a great attitude at work. We have to have a great attitude on that sports team at school. We have to have a great attitude. We have to set the foundation for favor. Someone say, set the foundation for favor. If it pleases the king, let let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river, that they must permit me to pass through till I come to Judah. So that's permission to pass. Now, I want you to know something, and I want you to really hear me prophetically. You have to ask God for permission to get out of the garbage that you're in right now. Whether it's financial ruin or whether it's poor self-esteem or lack of a job or a family that's falling apart, say, give me permission to pass through. I had an old friend, a great man of God. He said, when you're going through hell, don't stop. Say it with me. When you're going through hell, if you're going through depression, say, God, give me permission to pass through it. And I know what God's going to tell you. Permission granted, just like he told Nehemiah. I'm just speaking in the spirit right now. I just have to hear my words right now. They're life. You're going through something right now, and you say, God, get me through this poverty. Get me through this conflict. Get me through this lack of a job. Get me that scholarship to university. Get me whatever. I, I, uh, three weeks ago, I started my doctoral studies. I'm going to be Dr. Goulet. But I said, I give up so much money. I didn't really have money to pay. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I, I gave up 45% of my salary. My wife and I are crazy givers. We love to give. I literally didn't have money to pay for, for my doctoral studies. And I, I, I said, guys, can you help me out? Can you help a brother out? I got a full scholarship to go to my doctor. They gave me a scholarship, full scholarship. Someone say, Shaba! <laughs> you see, because when you're a crazy giver, God's, God is no man's debtor. You can't outgive God. 
There's just no way you can do it. So what I want you to do, I want you to live like a Joseph. See, Joseph became the ruler of Egypt. He had such authority and such wisdom, Joseph. You see, because when you're a Joseph, you know that you're called to great things. You're called, you know, Joseph, I'll tell you something. I, I, I plan on, I'm just getting this. I just, I just sense you're walking through a new door and you're re- I, I see a lot of money and favor coming your way. I really do. You and your princess, it's not going to be a lack of money. It's going to be favor, 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 favor over you. I'm just declaring over you as a couple. You know the Bible says with one you defeat a thousand, two, ten thousand. I'm just declaring something over you and your bride right now that you're walking through a door and get ready for money to start flowing your way. Because God's going to do it because you've been through the fire. You've been through all the garbage, right? You've been through the C-R-A-P. But now God says, I'm going to walk him through a new door, but it's a pleasant place. It's a good place. It's a prosperity place. Someone say amen to that. you got to realize that you're as much a VIP as our president was there. You're a VIP and God's plans for you are good plans. They're not evil plans. Ask God for anything. So what does he ask for? He says, listen, he, he says, I, I want to get through. I want to get to my homeland, but I got all these enemies. He says, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you that permission. Then he says, listen, if it pleases the, my king, uh, can you give me a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he must give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel, which pertains to the temple, for the city wall, and for the house that I'm going to occupy. And the king granted them to him according to the good hand of my God upon him. Shabba! Your boss is going to give you a raise because God's going to whisper in his ear. Even if the guy's not a Christian, it doesn't matter. The Bible says he speaks to kings. You're going to start getting promotions and bonuses. And please, don't just say, it's because I'm so good and a sight of bread. Please give praise to God. Please take a moment and say, God's good! Tell him right now. Come on, tell them right now. Your, your carpet cleaning company is going to double, triple. I'm just, it's all over both of you. It's, I'm telling you right now. And it's okay to say, man, I was part of it. Yes, we are. But I'm telling you, God's kissing both of you. He's kissing your company. He's kissing your parents too. And I'm just telling you right now, something is happening in your life that you're walking into a new realm as long as we stop and say thank you. That's God... God says, listen, give me tithes and offerings, but don't forget to say thank you. Ten got healed of leprosy, only one returned. Do you understand that everything I have right now is is thanks to God? I wanted to kill myself at 20. Do you understand that? I had my plan. As a counselor, I can tell you when you have your plan, it's really serious. I wanted to die, and I had a way of doing it. But God. So I don't know where you are right now, but... You can start asking the king for permission. God, give me permission to pass through this depression. Give me permission to get through the marriage problems. Give me permission to walk through loneliness. Give me permission to get out of this financial mess. Whatever it is, you can ask permission. And then what you ask for? God, give me resources. Someone say, God, give me resources. People say, I just want to hit the lottery. I want to hit the jackpot at Bellagio. No, 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 no. You're going to lose 98% of what you give. That's the statistics that I study. But. I gamble on God. I gamble on God. I gamble on God that if I give it, it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together. No, f- My life is a root beer float, brothers and sisters. Jesse, you're up there. That's all sowing seeds to God. When you're up there playing your, is that bass or guitar? Guitar. You're up there playing. That's an offering to God. See, you never, everything you do, everything you give, and everything you live can be up to God. It's an offering to the king. Some say, I'm giving an offering to the king. I have had just a few more points. Now, let's go back to the word, and then I'm going to pray. Worship team, please come up. I w- I'm not going to preach a long time. I'm going to go to lunch with, with uh, my princess and uh, some from friends, and uh, Lawrence and Christina, of course, our family, and, and then my friend Mason from uh, Minnesota. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 2, let's jump down a little further. Uh, then I went to the governors in the region beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. The Bible says that God will do exceedingly abundantly more than you ask or even think. Are you hearing me? What does that mean? He, Nehemiah didn't ask for that. 
He asked for a letter of passage. And God's going to give you a letter to pass through your depression. A letter to pass through your problems. Number two, he asked for resources. God's going to give you resources. Someone say, God's going to give me resources. You remember, do you remember when you go into school and you got a hall pass? Remember that? I used to love those hall passes. I wasn't a very good student when I was young. I was a little bit of a troublemaker, and I used to fight. In the, uh, I used to fight a lot, and I used to be obstinate with my uh, my teachers. I got my knuckles slashed by the nuns, and and uh, you know I was not a great kid. I was kind of rebellious. I was stubborn as all get out, but I used to love when I was a good boy. They gave me a hall pass, and I wish I could say that I always used that wall pass hall pass really well but sometimes I use my hall pass to do naughty things anybody relate to that am I the only one that did naughty things in his life do you ever skip school do you ever shoot spit wads did you ever do bad stuff my hand is up God loves using busted up people like me Someone gave me some teeth because my teeth were busted up. My scars here can't be fixed right now. They're just scars. But if God can use me, He can use anybody. You don't understand. If He could literally use someone like me, it's much easier for Him, Mark, to use you. He's just in this room right now. He's happy that we honored somebody. But I honor you just as much. And I'm telling you right now, he's going to give you resources you don't even ask for. Nehemiah just asked for a pass. Got it. He asked for lumber, resources. You'll get that too. Trust me. But thirdly, he sent an army with him with captains. Didn't ask for that, but got it anyway. You want to know why? Because the Bible says he'll do exceedingly abundantly more than you ask or even think. When I used to struggle with drugs and alcohol and violence, I said, God, take this away from my life. I can't handle it anymore. When, God t when, I, when I was depressed and I wanted to kill myself, I literally said, I'm a Christian, Lord, but I'm still depressed right now. I don't know how to get out of it. And, and, and one by one, God would grant my prayers. And that's the type of God that I serve. Because if he can use anyone... He can use me. If he can use me, he can use anyone. You, you're seeing the post-Jesus Goulet, not the pre-Jesus Goulet. And the beautiful promise that I have for you is he'll send his warrior angels ahead of you, the captains of the armies and soldiers to protect you. There's angels watching over you every day of your life. You have your own personal guardian angel, but the Bible says there's also angels that surround you. Remember when the prophet was surrounded by the enemy? He said, he said, listen, he said, he said, go check on this. He says, he says, go check to see if the help's here. And so his servant went out, there was no help, came back. Each time the servant couldn't see that God was about to send help to the prophet that was surrounded by the enemy. And eventually, all of a sudden he goes out there and says, there's a host of angels to back the prophet up. And that's how God feels about you. God loves you as much as He loves the prophets, as lo much as He loves me. And I'm just telling you right now, that if God can do what He just did this morning, He stayed the whole time. They told the president to leave three times. He wouldn't listen to them. He, sto he stayed the entire message till we blessed Him at the end. Somebody say amen to that. And you're just as important as the president. And just like I knelt for the first service, I kneel for you now. I really love you. I really believe in you. I believe in God in you and through you. And just like God used Nehemiah, he's going to use you. I love that song, Make Me a Blessing. I want you to close your eyes with me. No, let's do this. While I'm kneeling for you, if you go, man, this message really speaks to me. Would you stand up, please? If you say, wow, this is really speaking to me. This is really speaking to me. I want you to stand up, please. Would you stand up and just, oh, yeah, surrender. 
surrender to the Spirit. He's in this room right now. He's looking for surrendered, surrendered vessels so he can use you to do great things. If you, maybe you've never done it before. Maybe this is your first time to stand up in a church, and I won't embarrass you. We won't put you on the TV or anything. It's just, it's just you and I and God, just all in one room and, and a bunch of our friends, and no one judges you. No one hates you. We all love you. Whether you're an up-and-outer and you're a multi-millionaire or you're down-and-outer, you're walking the streets of Vegas, we love you. We just think so highly of you, and we know that just like Nehemiah, God's sending you, passing, you'll be able to pass through what you're going through. And then he'll give you resources, and then he'll send you an army to defend you. If you say, man, I really need that, Paul. I, I, hey, Paul, Mark, little warrior, I really need that. Would you stand up right now? We're going to sing it one more time, then I'm going to close in prayer. And, 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 and Christine's just going to lead us in the song. If you're standing, could you sing it with your whole, whole heart? Come on, Christine.